first thing I want you to see, we're going to get right into it, is if you're holding your cane in the traditional way, you're leaning on it, you have your other hand up between you and the thread, and you can bring this up very fast, smash them right between the legs, hitting them right in the privates. Now, you might miss him, and you might come a little bit higher and hit him up under the chin, and that's all right. Or he might be reaching or grabbing, trying to push you, and you just smash into that arm. Now, a heavy, strong cane like this, Cane Master Self-Defense Cane, is going to break that bone. It's going to compress flesh and break the bone. After this strike, you can bring this down on top, defending yourself very quickly with your self-defense walking cane. So the first motion here, second motion, coming down on top. The second thing I want you to see is you can turn your hips and bring your arm and your shoulders together. Now, you're never going to just use your arm by itself. You're always going to turn your arm and your shoulders together to create maximum force and power swinging through, and your target's going to be what you can remove or destroy for self-defense, his ability to see, breathe temporarily, permanently, his ability to be awake. You're going to turn off his operating system. If you smash him here, you hit him in the neck in that uh, process of nerves, flushes the blood out of his brain, he drops to the ground like a sack of poo. Smashing that arm, smashing the elbow, smashing the uh, arm he's reaching out again with, turning this way. And again, down on top. It's just a simple turn of the hips, and then you turn back. This is all shoulders and hips. This is how to defend yourself with walking cane quickly. Now, I do have uh, my six-week course coming up. For those of you who want to participate live once a week, I put a link. I didn't put a link. I put my email below if you want to see, uh, if you're interested. Send me an email if you want to participate in some live training. Send it to me. Or if you want to get certified to teach. I know a lot of you want to certify. You've been training with me for a long time. You want to teach others. Send me a link or send me an email. Pasquinelli at hotmail.com. It's in the description below. That's what I'm trying to say. So here and down or here and down. The third thing that I want you to do is flip your cane around so that the crook is facing out. You're going to pop it up into your hand. You have it in this position. You put it between you and the threat, and then it's a simple thrust or a punch. Think about punching, a reverse punch coming off the back side of the body, just smashing in. See how I turn that? Hello, Sergeant Rock 621. It's good to see you. Smashing his nose, smashing his teeth, smashing his throat. From here, I'm going to reach up and grab and rip. I want you to smash and rip. Smash and grab. We'll call it that. We'll turn the, turn the tides on him, right? We'll change the meaning of smash and grab. It'll be smash and then grab and rip something off. You're going to hit him here. You're going to turn here, and you're going to rip just like that. Uh, Studer, thank you so much for that generous donation. From this position, you can also bring the backside around. Again, turning through your shoulders and hips. Let your body do the work. His arm could be stronger than your arm. He could be younger, stronger, faster. doesn't matter. You're going to overcome that by understanding how the body works. It's another reason you can sign up for the six-week course. You want to learn one-on-one, -on -one, I also do that. But when we're in a group setting, we do like a Zoom thing. I can see what you're doing. You can see what I'm doing. We can give each other feedback and grow together. So from here, turning here, bringing it through here, put your hand here to your ear like you're answering your phone, and then stick that right into his face. Now you see this teardrop. Hello, Michael. It's good to see you. Yeah, Michael says he never hits the ATM without his walking cane. I don't pump gas without my walking cane. Adrish, good to see you again. Long time no see. This teardrop shape means that you have like this dull blade almost on your walking cane. If you have one of these Cane Master self-defense canes, and that allows you, when you do those simple strikes, to compress that flesh even faster, break the bone even more for self-defense. That's the purpose of that. Now, this is, um, this is the fancy cane. It's got the fancy little eyeballs there has this grip on it. This is nice, but you can have something simple too. This is the Dojo Training Cane. These are very simple and effective. This is where I like a lot of people to start if you haven't done it before, or if you're not as strong as you used to be, or you're just rebuilding your strength for some reason, go with the Rattan Walking Cane. I put links below if you wanna see the walking, the Rattan Walking Cane, or, and this is super, super inexpensive. My re recommendation would be to get one or both or all three. I like to have this for training at the beginning, and then sometimes I'll just use this if my arms are sore, and then this is a little bit heavier, so you build some more power, and then of course this is your everyday, this is my everyday walking cane. Take this with me wherever I go. Usually, it doesn't live in my car right now because I have an even nicer one that I haven't used, I haven't showed you yet, that I'm gonna give away uh, later this year. Um, 
So, but that's really pretty, the one that I have in my car right now. Anyway, they're all Cane Masters canes. The link is below. This is the Rattan cane. I'm gonna switch you over to this because I wanna see you. I wanna show you, I showed you a bunch of techniques already. I wanna show you if you're just getting started, how to warm your body up and the reason that you're gonna do this spin. Now you're gonna close your hand, but not all the way. So you're not squeezing, your fingers are closed and you're pushing away and you're making the small motion. Now, every time you do this and any other kind of training, I want you to pay attention to your body. Think about keeping your chin down, stomach up and in. Oh, by the way, the best way to get knocked out is put your chin up when you're in a fight. You'll walk right into that punch and you're gonna go down, lights out. Keep that chin tucked, let your body do the work. Stomach up and in, abs tight. You're just cranking this around. And you're gonna build callus on your hands for self-defense. Medusa, hello, it's good to see you. Hello to everybody else who's on here. I saw a lot of you pop on real quick. And um, I just wanted to get the video started. I wanna give you some techniques before I started saying hello to everybody. You're gonna come across and back, but I really do appreciate you being here, especially on a day where a lot of us are off. But you're just turning over and back. Just think about a slap across the face, followed by a back, backhand. Injury to insult is what I call that. But you're turning through your shoulders and hips. I want you to get this motion down. This kind of spinning not only builds the callus in your hands and some power in your grip, but it's also gonna bring your heart rate up a little bit. It's gonna help you lean out faster, teaches you timing and distance, proprioception, spatial awareness, coming over and back. It's gonna warm up your elbows, your shoulders. It's gonna keep you safe from injury. Then you're gonna pop it into your other hand and do the same thing over here. Again, your hand is mostly closed and you're just pushing away. I just realized I was talking really fast and it's funny to me that I'm talking fast because when I watch the YouTube videos, I put everything on 1.75, especially if I'm listening to a podcast because I never have enough time to listen to something in the little windows that I have to listen and try to find some information I want. So I always turn it on really fast. Maybe that makes me talk fast. X NYC Prepper, it's good to see you. Turning over and back, stomach and in, abs tight, chin tucked. And increase that when you can. Now, the nice thing about using this rattan cane, and the reason I recommend to you that you get one of these if you don't have one already, if you're starting out, is because it's extremely lightweight. And you can hear, by the way, it cuts the air, that it moves really fast. So it's going to do a lot of damage. If you choose to carry this for your everyday cane, you're gonna be able to hit full power and you're not gonna break it. It's uh, grass, rattan is a grass, and it's extremely lightweight, extremely strong. This, the oak cane, is what I like to see you move up to because as you start to, sp after you spin that for a while, you'll pick this up, it's gonna spin a little bit faster because it has more weight, and it's gonna challenge your grip. Your grip is gonna get stronger. Keep that chin tucked, stomach coming in, abs tight and you're just gonna get stronger, faster, stronger, faster. Uh, CDRO, good to see you, thank you for being here. I recently discovered the channel. Appreciate your being here. I just whacked myself in the elbow. Try not to hit this bag, so I was keeping it tight. But that's another, another great reason to use a weapon, especially a harder wood weapon. This is why I don't like, like people to use foam, anything, especially nunchucks, because you don't learn. I just hit my elbow, I hit the funny bone there. If you've ever done that, you know, how much that feels or what that feels like. It's a good kind of pain. It's a reminder, get your hands up, pay attention to what you're doing. If you get sloppy, you get instant feedback and that instant feedback will make you better. Throw in the other hand, coming across and back. And this is just the beginning. There are other ways that you can spin to increase your proprioception and your time and distance and all that. But just a simple spin to get warmed up. The second exercise I like you to do when you're getting started out is you throw it in front of you, push your bum back, and then bend. So squats, this is an assisted squat. When you lean your weight into this, you're assisting yourself going up and down, and you're taking some of the weight off of your legs. So if you're not as strong as you used to be, or you're recovering from an injury, or you're just getting reconnected to your fitness, you're gonna be able to do more because you weigh less. You're putting more weight on this and allow yourself to go up and down. Um, yeah, nothing funny when you bang your humorous, absolutely. Uh, Ghost Hawk, good to see you. Yeah, I respect you being here too, thank you very much. But just going up and down, I want you to do these exercises for about 30 seconds. 
And that 30 seconds up and down is gonna build power in your legs for that knockout strike. All the strikes, when you do them right, are gonna come off the floor from your feet. Even if you're confined to a wheelchair, you can do all these exercises, except the squats, obviously, from a wheelchair. Red Dog, good to see you. Yeah, my pleasure to be here today. Um, if you can't do this because you, you don't have use of the legs or you're confined to a wheelchair for whatever reason, that's okay, don't do that. We'll make up for it somewhere else. But you can do all the spinning sitting in your chair. You can do all the strikes sitting from the chair. You can be just as effective at defending yourself even if you're sitting in a chair. And I want you to practice from time to time. Put a chair there, sit in it, practice not just the spins, but all of the striking combinations, all of those things, because you might be sitting on a bench. Um, Singe Man, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, you might be sitting on the plane. You can take this through TSA. This will go on the plane with you. This goes right through, whew, through the uh, checkpoint. You can have this wherever you go. So, you, yeah, XNYC and Prepper and I are dressed alike today. We both, we, uh, the dress code, I guess. Any advice for defending against a thug who happens to have a little bit of martial arts training? Um, yeah, you, if you have to defend yourself and you have to fight, you might as well fight. The, whoever, whoever moves first usually has the advantage. So first mover advantage is very, very important. In my experience, most people who seriously train martial arts are not, they, they've gotten past the need to go around beating people up. And for the most part, there's some idiots out there. But I think it's very rare that you've run into somebody who's had some martial arts training. And if they had, they, they might talk about it. They'll, they'll, they'll brag about it, but not necessarily. Good afternoon, Pat, uh, Patrick. It's good to see you. A lot of people lie and say they've done a lot of this and they've done a lot of that. And then you see him fight and you realize, oh, that guy, he doesn't know what he's doing. He hasn't really had experience. He's, he's watched a lot of movies, right? Or he's watched a lot of UFC fights. And they look, they look like they know what they're doing, but they really don't. If you train, you're going to be able to defend yourself. Now, back to the basic techniques. I want you to let this be in this uh, traditional way, crooks facing behind you. And you're going to pick it up and let it slide down a little bit. Once you let it slide down a little bit, bring it in to your shoulder. Put the other hand between you and the threat. This hand is always up and then you're going to strike coming through this way. So you're striking one and then there's a follow through and you pick it up to the other shoulder and two. Now I'm going slowly because I want you to see that you're going to be bringing it from your shoulders and through from the shoulders, always striking from this position. You have to get in the habit of getting it back here. Hello, Paul. It's good to see you. If you get it back here, you're not going to be out here. If you're out here, this is the threat. This is the thug. This is the punk. This is the street tough who's trying to take something from you, like your life, your dignity, your freedom. If it's your wallet, give him your wallet, right? You can always get more money. You can always get another phone. But if he's trying to hurt you in a way that you can't recover from, and you swing this strike, and he closes the distance at the same time, you're never going to hit him. Your arm is going to wrap around him, and he's going to get you, especially if he's got a, a weapon, like one of these. He's going to get you before you get him. But if you have it here, and he comes in, he's going to run into your stick. If you're also pushing, extending that arm, turning through your shoulders and hips, coming through this way, then you're, he's going to run into that. He's not going to get you. He's going to eat your cane for self-defense. Now, this is one of the reasons I want to do the six-week course is that I, so I can see what you're doing because in my experience, when I work with you in, in person, there's still a lot of this striking or it's coming from here, but it's not coming back here. And I like to work on cleaning that up together. So that if we're all in the, 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 the Zoom chat together and I can see you, you can see me, and you can see if, if I start to uh, get sloppy, you call me out. If I start to see you not pulling it from the shoulder, not striking from here, then I can remind you and then you can get better faster. That's the whole reason I want to do the six weeks. I believe if, and it might be true for you. If it is put it in the, in the, uh, not just the chat, but the comment section, how you might benefit from training together, me being able to see you at, in real time. Or another option is you watch the videos, and then you send me a video of yourself and you can participate that way too. If you're not able to make the live trainings, watch them after and then send me a video and I would love to give you some feedback. But I wanna be able to do that. I wanna be able to clean up some of your techniques so you can go from zero to hero 
in the shortest period possible, the shortest amount of time possible. Yeah, W9UFO said, like both options, if you do sign up for the six-week course, you will have the op opportunity to send me the video, and I'll tell you a secret right here. If you sent me a video right now, <laughs> I would most likely, I always have, I'll make comments and I'll send it back to you, especially if you put it in Dropbox, the Dropbox, if you're not familiar, or Google Documents. Google Documents is probably the best, but they do both do it. You send me a Google Doc with your video or, um, or you know, upload it to Google or you upload it to Dropbox. Then when, it, when I see it in real time as I'm watching it, there's a little box where I can make comments. And then when you watch back the video, you'll see my comments at exactly the time that I made them. So in minute 231, you can see that I said, your hands, too, your, your arms too far out, you gotta get your cane on your, your shoulder. So from this position, cane from the shoulder, practice these first two strikes, and then turn the hand and bring it. And again, look how tight this is in the frame of your body. This is the frame of your body from your shoulders to your hips. Keep your strikes within that frame, two down, two up, and then coming across horizontally and back. Imagine striking the temple, the shoulders, the arms, the body, the knee, that vicious dog who's attacking and mauling your dog or somebody else. And then finally down straight from the middle of your body coming here. Not here, not over here, but from here straight down. So that vertical strike coming straight down. So we have angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, five, six, seven. Switch hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, and straight down. So one, two, and this is the, this, we're going to go over when we do the six week course, we're going to break six, six different chunks each week. We'll do what we did from the previous week and then add something new. By the end of the six weeks, you will not be a master of the cane. You'll be a master of cane basics. And that's all you really need to be. You, you don't have to spend 30 years training in cane, like to become a master in martial arts in some esoteric you know, goju ru or ishin ru, some, some karate style or some tang sudo or, you know, some uh, warang do or some Korean style or some, you know, praying mantis kung fu, uh, walum. You don't have to spend 30, 30 years in that just to become a master of the basics. But with the cane, you're going to master the basics in six weeks. That's the goal. And if not, we'll keep working. But my, my experience has been you can get really good if you do a little bit every day with your walking cane in just six weeks. I want you to do both sides evenly, just in case one arm gets broken or chopped off in the middle of it, the fight of your life, or incapacitated, or this side's just stronger, or this side feels better, whatever. But always do both sides evenly. Now, the second thing I want you to do is turn it. NYC Prepper, thank you for that becoming a virtual student. Turning it outside, I want you to practice that under the leg, between the legs, or again, it can be under the chin, or he's reaching, you're smashing, breaking the bone, and then down over top. So one, two. And if you don't have something to hit, just practice in the air. One, two. But put your phone on or get a mirror so that you can see that this stays in the center line, in that frame of your body, from the center line of your body. Because if you're out here, you're not hitting him. If you're here and he's coming at you, he's running right into your cane. And you're gonna be able, the faster you do this, you're going to shock yourself with how fast you can get these two motions down. And these two motions can become this, they can become this, they can become this, whoop, got to get around it, come here and smashing down on top. And each one of them is going to work um, just off the same, same basic principle. You're turning your shoulders and hips, and then you're turning away and coming back in. Turning and then turning away and coming back in. Turn, turn away, come back in. Turn. It's almost like that PR24, you can hear it. it's going to hit extremely hard and then whoo, back down on top here and down into the third one was coming up at an angle and then smashing on top from here to here. Same thing both sides and do it in a way, it doesn't have to be as fast as mine, I'm just trying to squeeze it all in so you can see some of the techniques I want you to practice. But the faster you push yourself in practice, the faster you're going to be able to defend yourself in real. Um, Dennis says he teaches self-defense, especially for young women. Now he has arthritis in the knee. That stinks. So yeah, so we all have to adjust, right? I have bone on bone, hip spurs. And I know someone's going to say in the comment, hey, get, just get the hips replaced. 
just do it. And, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you're looking out for me. I'm taking the long approach, the hard-headed approach. I'm doing extreme stretching every day. And I've been walking backward. If you haven't tried walking backward, I'm not kidding. That has reduced the inflammation and the pain in my hips because it's strengthened the glutes. And it's stabilized everything. I don't get as much movement as I was getting. I don't have nearly as much inflammation as I had. I also cleaned up the diet and started taking the glucosamine with the MSM and the chondroitin. And that really, and then the CBD oil. So I, I resisted the CBD oil forever because I didn't understand what it was. And it, but what it does is it improves your, your circulation, gets the inflammation out, you heal faster. So yeah, and you can do the ozone injections. I haven't tried that yet, Michael. I've heard about it. I, I'm willing to try a lot of things. The last thing I'll do is a thousand, 100 grand a hip, right? That's I think what it costs for <laughs> hip replacement, which makes me think you know there might be an incentive there for them to push it so hard. And I'm not against it, I'm just saying it's not time for me yet. Anyway, yeah, th thanks for saying that. I just want everybody to know my body hurts all the time. I, I was saying something, I think it was a, a year ago, I was talking to someone um, who's in our industry, who's been doing martial arts for about as long as I have. And we were just talking how I cannot remember when I woke up and I just felt uh, comfortable, relaxed, great, my body didn't hurt. But it's because I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of work. And then I think the alternative that I've seen so much, because I see my contemporaries and peers and people older than me, even younger than me, is they just grow so unhealthy out of shape. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing anybody, is that you're going to get older anyway. Time's going to pass no matter what, right? A year from now is going to be a year from now no matter what I do. But if I continue to move in a year from now and I learn new ways to move and I'm always researching, always trying to find teachers to teach me, and I learn something new that improves the way that I move and strengthens and change my diet and learn better, a year's gonna go by no matter what. So a year from now, I can be strong and healthy and fit, maybe not as strong, but strong, healthy and fit, but if I do nothing for a year, waiting for things to fix themselves on their own, one, they're not going to, I'm gonna be in worse shape, two, I'm gonna lose at a much faster rate, bone, and that's true once you reach a certain age, we all know that, you lose more bone density, you lose more mobility, you lose more capacity, and then it just accelerates. It's a snowball. But I've also known great martial artists, 80, 90, 100 plus, who are still kicking. They're not kicking as high, they're not kicking as fast, they're not moving as fast. They don't hit nearly as hard, but they hit hard enough, and they move, as, they move well enough. And they're, they're living uh, vibrant, vital lives, and they can defend themselves which is extremely important. You have self-defense against the thug on the street, and then you have self-defense against aging and complacency and giving up and whining and crying and listening to your own BS and all the reasons why you can't. Instead of focusing on why you can't, pick one reason why you can. I wanna live longer, better, and then focus on that, and then get to work. Anyway, enough of the soapbox. Didn't mean to preach at you. So we have it, we've turned it around, I want you to Practice those techniques, and then I want you to pop it up and practice that punching technique, followed by this strike. So I want you to punch here, and remember I say you can turn it, smash and grab, or you lift your ear and then smash in this way. So just practice here, and then switch it to the other hand, pop it up. One, bring it in. Two, if you have your cane, if you're using the cane because you cannot walk without it, so it's for mobility, and if you were to lift it off the ground, you would fall on the ground, and you're able to use two canes, I would say get two canes. Put one cane in your hand to lean on, and the other cane to fight with. Strike here, strike here, strike here, push him here, smash on top. Pop it up here, snatch him in, pull him down, bring this side through, bring it up to your ear. It just becomes a one-handed strike instead of a two-handed strike. So don't believe that if you need your cane for mobility, you can't use these techniques practice and it might not be as fast as I am but I've been doing this for a long time so start where you are this is one there's your strike answer your phone stick it in his eye reach out smash and grab bring this through here slide it down to your hand smash them on top swing it through this way swing it back coming down that way whatever you can do you can do in one hand two hands is a little bit better but one hand is still good enough Dennis says he's already 80 years young. Due to his exercise, he feel better than he did 30 years ago. Amen, Dennis. I've been working with students in their 
late 50s, late 40s plus, all the way up to um, 80s. And I see the same thing you're talking about. We all get better with practice. And it's consistently true that it accumulates and it compounds. So that means the more you do this week, the more you can do next week. If you do a tiny bit this week, you're gonna be able to do a tiny bit more next week. But that's enough because it compounds. And then in two weeks, you do a tiny bit more, but now you're doing a little bit, you're doing more than you did the first two weeks. And then the third week, then you're stronger, but you're not just three times strong. You, it's a compounding effect, just like your interest when you invest your money for your life. And then a year from now, there's no telling. You might feel like Dennis, 80 years old by uh, biology, but you feel 30 years younger by your ability to move and think. Your, and all this stuff is so good for your brain elasticity. The more elastic your brain is, the more plastic it is, the more elastic and strong your body is. It all goes together. Yeah, NY, XNYC Prepper says, God bless Dennis. Amen to that. I'll say amen to in anything when it comes to God bless. Now we're leaning right, we're leaning left. You can strike either side. Uh, and I've worked with um, students who use two crutches, you know, the metal kind where your hand is here, and there's that uh, half circle here. And these are extremely effective for self-defense. And I don't know, you know, if you have no other choice, that's a great way to defend yourself. And the greatest thing about it is someone who sees you as a victim has no idea that you've been training and you've been improving yourself and that t three or four months ago when you started, you didn't feel you could do anything. And now you know that you can just take that cane and you can stick it between his legs and then you can smash it across his face and bring it into his ribs for self-defense and that you can defend yourself and that they picked on the wrong person. And that's because you did the work. And that's the whole point of cane self-defense. Cane self-defense for seniors, cane self-defense for um, the people who have physical challenges, disabilities, but cane self-defense for anybody who wants the great gray man option. Gray man, gray woman, meaning that this blends in, especially this one. This one a little bit less, but it's kind of fancy. Hello, Donnie, good to see you. And, and I've seen these in airports now. I've seen these in um, places I've traveled where there are lots of tourists, big zoo out in San Diego. I saw four Cane Master Canes, two or four, I can't remember. Um, but, I, but that trip, that trip and the trip we took to Costa Rica the same year, I saw a ton of canes and self-defense sticks. Uh, Pegs lives in Australia, we can't defend ourselves. Yeah, so things like this are very handy. The saddest thing that is gonna happen is we're gonna get some comments below and, and let me know where you live in the comments below, please and whether this is acceptable where you live or not, or whether you can defend yourself with other tools or not. But someone will, will sign in from Great Britain, UK, and say, hey, I live in London, I live in UK, and we wouldn't be able to defend ourselves with that because the courts wouldn't like it. And I say it's your God-given right to defend yourself. And it might not be man's law. Man's law might not protect you right now, but God will protect you. And I honestly believe that it's, things always correct themselves. I think we go so far one way and, and we've gone so far to the ridiculous side of things when, where people can't defend themselves, but the criminals have all the rights in the world and it, the pendulum will swing. It'll correct itself. We'll go back the other direction where the, the law sees common sense and man's law will change. But no matter what, it's your right to defend your life. It's your right to, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's like your, it's, it's your God-given right for free speech. That's not a, government can't give you that, that right. Now, the government can suppress it and try to take it away, and they do, but the point is, it's God, God gives you the right, and there are some things that are worth fighting for, and I believe that freedom of speech, freedom to live your life, those are things worth fighting for. And I know there are places in the world where, like the, the, like the North Koreas of the world, China's, where it's so oppressive, Cuba, that you have no freedoms, but, in the rest of the world where we need to, we still have some light at the end of the tunnel, we need to become that beacon again for those dark countries and we need to take our freedoms back. Anyway, I don't wanna, I wanna uh, yeah, Semper Fi Max, when Dog says, Nicholas, good to see you. I'm just saying, uh, don't be afraid to defend yourself. Don't be afraid to carry a self-defense tool because you might get in trouble if you truly need it and some thug or two or three thugs are trying to take your life and you actually defend yourself with this, and then you have to stand in front of a judge or a jury. And there's that old saying, I'd rather be 
tried by a jury of 12, then buried by six, or tried by 12, buried by six. You know, the pallbearers who are carrying your coffin because you were so afraid of getting in trouble that you didn't defend yourself, and then the criminals run freely to go hurt somebody else. Maybe you pay the price of an oppressive government and you are able to defend yourself, but then you've saved the next person because you took some of those thugs out with you. Anyway, that's, again, I was trying not to get all up on my soapbox. I really just wanted to give you some basic techniques that you, you could use, letting you know, because I know you keep asking me about the course when it's starting. We're starting in September. I'm thinking about doing two days. If you can make one or make the other one or make both, it's all going to be one price. It's $250 if you want to do it. If that's too much for you, that's fine. Do these videos for free. Like I said, you can always send me your videos. I'll give you feedback no matter what but it's a way for you to help support the virtual dojo for us to train together, for me to see you. I'll show you where we're gonna train. Hello, Paul. That's the TV that I use, the camera on top. That's a Facebook product that has a port, it's called a portal, and the camera follows me all around the room and zooms in. It's great if you read lips, if you're hearing disabled, I have some students like that. So that's, that's why I use it. But we're gonna be able to train together, I'm gonna to be able to show you some techniques can be able to correct your technique um, live on the spot or like I said just keep watching these videos and if you haven't done so subscribe so that you keep getting them and then we're gonna work on more this week I think I have more time to do some more videos I want to upload a bunch of stuff just to uh, keep training with you because you guys uh, when, when, when I'm frustrated and I'm challenged and this place here is struggling when I come online and I train with you I get so much from that. I get more than you guys could believe in affirmation and positivity and just having fun with this channel. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. And again, thanks for, uh, Studer, for that uh, super chat. And thanks for joining uh, XML NYC Prepper. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.